Welcome to Brenham. It's about halfway between Austin and Houston and is also the heart of the Blue Bonner region of Texas and it's also an important piece of Texas state history. And we're not just talking about ice cream. Not yet anyway because Washington County is also home to the site of the signing of the Texas Declaration of Independence and now has one more reason that's helped put Brenham on the map with everyone's favorite dessert. Bluebell is actually the fourth largest ice cream producer in the whole entire country, and it all started with the Little Creamery back in 1907. You'll find, not surprisingly, an ice cream parlor and a factory, but you'll also find a country store, visitor center, a couple of Instagram-friendly spots, and crowds of ice cream-loving folks from all over here to experience the birthplace of a legend. And to get a little advice and to learn a bit more about the story behind Bluebell, I met up with Joe here at the parlor. Thank you so much. Best welcome ever. Yes. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for meeting us here today. What sets Bluebell apart from all the other guys? Well, it is the product first and foremost. We, we have the freshest and finest ingredients. From the time we uh, purchase ingredients, to the time one of our employees delivers it to a store shelf, a Bluebell employee has handled that product. Nice, that's that's nice to know. It's handled mm -hmm. with care yeah. and with professionalism. That's right. <laughs> we are going to do a little bit of a tour. What can visitors expect when they do come out here and visit? Yeah, we invite people onto the property. Okay, it's pretty much a self a guided experience. We have a, a statue garden out front that has the founders and our, our cow and girl logo in a statue form. Yeah. Then we have a museum that people can look through. And then after that, of course, everybody wants to come up and eat ice cream. That's the goal, right? <laughs> yes. So we have an ice cream parlor and we added an observation deck last year. Wonderful. Lots well, to see. Y'all have been great, you know, just introducing us to the whole entire place. Y'all have been wonderful. I can't wait to get going. I can only imagine what to expect back there. Yep. Thank you. Our first stop, the observation deck with our tour guide, Jenny, where you can view the ice cream making process and build up an appetite of what's to come. So the first process that you're gonna come into on our observation deck is actually an explanation about how we make our ice cream. We start with our milk and we make our way through and this kind of just explains what you're watching. As the milk comes in, it's tested and once it's been accepted, then we get it into production. Perfect. Then we go through pasteurization. Oh. Then it goes through, I don't know, homogenizer and homogenization is basically these little gears that pump out the product and then from there once we start whipping up that cream into ice cream that's where we're going to actually add those fresh ingredients okay and then we can actually see the magic down here happen where it's then filled into the half gallons perfect yeah so let's, let's go take that. a look at that yeah So now what we're looking at is actually down in our production area. Very cool. So because of our employees and privacy, we don't actually allow cameras to film that, but you can see how exciting this is for visitors that are coming through to just watch how their favorite treats are actually being made. Yeah. So do you want to check out how we take our ice cream from our creamery to the store? Yes, I would love to. All right, well, let's go show you how that works. Okay, perfect. Okay. We have Bluebell trucks on the road actually delivering ice cream to the grocery stores. So this is kind of what that looks like. You want to take a look inside? You want me to go inside there? <laughs> yeah, you want to go check it out? Let's do it. All right, let's go, let's go walk through the truck here. So get into the cold temperatures. Yeah. You got to get suited up properly. Okay. Let's do this, y'all. <laughs> Okay, see ya. Here goes nothing. Oh, we're locked in. Oh my goodness, it really is cold in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this, but look at all the different flavors that they have, y'all. This whole TV thing doesn't work out. Maybe I'll be a Bluebell ice cream delivery person. What do y'all say? After that, we ducked into the country store for some more seasonally appropriate Bluebell swag. Cook it up in the kitchen. Trucker hats are always in, right? <laughs> I love it. I get cranky without my bluebell. <laughs> and coffee. If 
if you want to learn more about the history of Bluebell, you can stop by the Visitor Center and pick up some fun facts along the way. So as with any tour, you probably need to start with a hat. <laughs> yes, I've been seeing them around. Seeing I was around. waiting until I get to pull one out, put one on. Looks great on you. Thank you. <laughs> it only fits my head that much, but it'll work. So around here, we have our uh, Bluebell history timeline. So we started as the Brenham Creamery Company, but we actually changed our name in 1919 to Bluebell Creameries after the wildflower, the Bluebell, that grows in this area in the hot summer months. Very cool, I didn't I know. know that. Yeah, it's really oh, neat. So this is actually a photo of Howard Cruzy early on in production. Handsome fella. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what he was responsible for creating? What is that? Homemade vanilla. Oh. Our number one He's the seller. genius. He is. <laughs> so he worked many, many years to create that flavor and really make sure he captured that homemade taste. So here in Texas, you can see where all we have these distribution centers that are actually responsible for getting it into the local stores. Yeah. And then we have three production facilities. Our obviously our largest one here in Brenham. You Texas. are here. That's right. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> are you getting hungry yet? I am. I actually. know. <laughs> Want to learn more about visiting the Bluebell Creamery? Go to bluebell.com or find them on Facebook. All right, so all the learning about the history of Bluebell ice cream really makes me want to actually try it and eat it. So let's head back to the parlor and uh, try out some of their new flavors, huh? Serving up to 3,000 cones a day during the summer, the parlor is home to 20 flavors and has a bit of that small town ice cream shop charm, which makes it the perfect setting for the first annual YOLO Texas Ice Cream Flavor Challenge. Five flavors, one spoon, no eyesight. Got it? We're gonna be blindfolded. See if I can handle it. <laughs> Rocky Road? No, no, okay. What is it? Mocha almond. Mocha almond fudge. Buttermilk. Pecan, pecan. Buttermilk pecan. Millennium. Yes. I feel like a child. Cookies and cream. <laughs> Is this a sherbet? Rainbow flavored? Peach? No. Orange. Mango. Orange. Lemon. Is this lemon? Yeah. Oh. Mmm. Is this a sherbet? Yes. Oh yeah. For our next challenge, we wouldn't be eating the ice cream, we'd be scooping it. And three, two, one, go! fun doesn't stop there because up next I got the chance to mix up my own creation. Snickerdoodle. Okay, we got some almonds here. How about some chocolate chips? I'm gonna sprinkle that in. Oreos right here. Some chocolate. We got some pecans here. All right, I think I'm done. Looks good, y'all. Y'all did good! So I personally love the Yellow Texas flavored ice cream, but I may be a little biased, but it did seem like everyone else liked it too. And to get a little inspiration for next time, I asked around to find out what other folks' favorite flavors were. My favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip, peach, peach, peach. Cookies and cream. Rainbow sherbet. Purple chocolate. Pecan. 
I love the mint chocolate chip. Cookies and cream? Cookie dough, cookies and cream together in an ice cream is perfect. The conclusion, there's no Bluebell ice cream that isn't worth trying. Overall, the trip to Bluebell was fantastic and the ice cream was so sweet, but it was time for our next adventure. Wait, 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 wait. You think we make a trip all the way out here and not see the star of the commercials? Everyone, meet our Southern Bluebell, also known as just Belle. Say hi. That's right, we headed 40 miles southwest of Brenham to LaGrange, home of the Jersey Barnyard, where we met up with Faith, owner of the farm. Belle is a Jersey cow and um, Bluebell Creameries has used jerseys in their uh, commercials all these years. Belle right now is, I think, 13 years old. We were discussing that the other day. Do you mind if we go ahead and meet her? Um, absolutely, yeah, let's go. All right, so here is Belle. I know, she's a super special cow. What makes her so special is one of the things that Bluebell Creameries was looking for when they look for their cows for commercials is their color and their temperament. Okay. So they totally look for this uh, really beautiful, fawn, reddish brown color yeah. that's throughout her body and it's very even. And the other thing that's, I guess, even more important is her temperament. As you can tell, she's just a real chill cow. She's very, very friendly. I love using her for our visitors because she stands there she's very patient she'll let pit children uh, milk on her and pet on her and she just loves all this attention the Jersey barnyard has over 100 cows on property and allows visitors to meet them milk them and enjoy a hayride to see the other animals it's a great way to see firsthand all the dairy fun All right, that's gonna do it for us here. Doing everything Bluebell. If you like ice cream, which I'm pretty sure everyone does, make sure to check it out at the Bluebell Creamery, or you can come out and meet Belle herself in LaGrange. But we're gonna go back to the studio. I'm gonna get this before it melts all over my hand. Maybe I'm gonna work out tomorrow morning. We'll catch y'all later. Want to learn more about visiting the Bluebell Creamery? Go to bluebell.com. And if you'd like to meet Belle herself, Check out TexasJersey.com for directions and tour information. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas. So this one is for all you aviation enthusiasts. We found a special hangar that lets you jump back in time and also hosts its own glider competition that brings in folks from all over the world. Exciting, right? So join us for the ride as we make our way to the beautiful hill country of Uvalde, Texas. Our destination today is just south of the town of Vivaldi, where for a handful of days, some of the best pilots around compete in a battle of skill and speed as they soar through the hill country sky. So if you're thinking to yourself, this doesn't look like your average recreational aircraft, because it isn't. This aircraft right behind me is called a glider, and as you can see, the most obvious difference has got to be this honking huge wingspan. But the biggest difference of them all has got to be right up front. Y'all, there is no engine in here. What? Now, I'm no pilot, so to help fill in the gaps, I met up with assistant city manager Joe and glider contestant Conrad. AC Walken, the Yolo, Texas, to Valley, Texas. Well, let me present you with this t-shirt to welcome to Valley and Garnerfield Airport. Thank you so much. I'm going to fit in, kind of. <laughs> How does a national competition, a soaring gliding, soaring glider competition, come out to Valley, Texas of all places? One thing they're really known for here in our airport, in our area in general, is the thermals. These guys work uh, by the thermals, that's the only thing that powers their gliders. Yeah. So worldwide, we're known for great thermals in our area. So Conrad, I'm gonna switch this over to you because you're actually flying in the competition and you know a thing or two about, you know, gliders, and I don't. A glider is a very efficient aircraft. It's extremely aerodynamic uh, and it does not have a motor. So the glider is towed aloft by a tow plane Typically, a, a general aviation aircraft that has a good power to weight ratio tows the glider up to 2,000 feet, and then uh, from there, they're, they're let loose to fly for another six hours without a drop of gas. We're using the heating of the Earth's surface to provide power. So what we look for, you may see a dust devil or something on the ground. A dust devil is the start of a thermal. 
Uh, thermal is just rising hot air. We're looking for all sorts of signs to figure out where that rising hot air is. Competition is for speed and distance. Hiya, it's happening. The planes right now are getting prepared to take off, but the way that this all works is that a tow plane will take them down the runway, and then after that, it's up to them to find enough rising air to get them to the bottom of the clouds. Y'all, this is blowing my mind, and I cannot wait to see this all right in front of my eyes. And just because they're way up there and we happen to be on solid ground doesn't mean the fun has to stop. In addition to hosting the soaring competition, the Flight Center is also home to the Aviation Museum, an incredible collection of Second World War memorabilia. The first thing that really caught my eye is this uh, fashionable jacket here. It was worn by the Women's Air Force Service. And believe it or not, there's actually a lot of women that were flying airplanes. This is how they used to teach back in the day. Instead of going into the planes, they used these, gave you like classroom lesson, and then you went up into the plane. So I definitely need a lesson because I know nothing <laughs> besides watching from down below. And let me say, I'm really good at that. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where we are in Uvalde for the annual 15 meter and open classic glider competition. So as you know, World War II produced some of the most famous aircrafts of all time, which brings us to Huff Air, where they keep the collection of war birds. But y'all, this isn't just a collection of pieces. These aircrafts and airplanes are fully functional and flyable. And to learn a bit more about Huff Air, we met up with aircraft engineer Chip King. Uvalde in the 1940s, when right before the war started and into the war, they built this airport just to train the pilots. Huff Air actually is not a museum, really. It's, these planes are uh, A private collection. Right? A private collection, exactly. And they all fly. Alrighty. This one looks fun. <laughs> this is the uh, T-6 Texan. This is a pretty famous airplane. This was an advanced trainer for the military back in World War II. And uh, this is what taught uh, all the pilots. They'd start out in the smaller airplanes and eventually work up to this airplane. I mean, I've seen it in movies, but it's still just so, you know, just kind of mind blowing and impressive just to hear about it and to see it in and person. To see it, yeah. It's this is airplane. massive. It's massive. It and is it should a be, massive oh my goodness gracious. But what I do see over here too is the name of this one. Misancha. Misancha. <laughs> Misancha, yeah. It's the other woman. It's, uh, they, this can happen when you have airplanes like this. It becomes <laughs> yeah. the other woman for a while. Yeah, hey, I love On it. On the weekends for sure. It has character. I love it. Has it has character. Has character. <laughs> and with just a little while longer before the first of the gliders land, we found a place to eat and grab a beer at a restaurant that pays homage to a certain era that put this airfield on the map. So this is the Hangar 6, a great place to eat. But what makes this place so special is that it's a cool little throwback to the old training airfields from back in the day. Inside you'll find fun retro decor that matches the historic vibe with a tasty looking menu and a list full of draft beer. I think I'm ready to order. Hey, what can I get for you? So I hear that the shrimp tacos are to die for. Yes, they're the way to go. All right, sold. Gosh, it looks so good. Well, I hope you enjoy. Let me know how it goes. I'll be back to check on you. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome. And I'm going in for the kill. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and after a long day riding the winds, not to mention traveling over 300 miles of Texas skies, it was time for the competitors to finally make their way home. But just because the race was done, didn't mean the party was over. The fun was just getting started at the VIP tent. <laughs> Uvalde is one is the, uh, we call it the sore spot of Texas, S-O-A-R. <laughs> I like that, the sore spot of Texas. And Uvalde has some of the best soaring conditions in the world. And Uvalde is like very welcoming. I'm from a small town, so you know, being in a small town, you know, it feels like home to me. 
Overall, you cannot beat Uvalde's hospitality, but with an event like this, you cannot help but appreciate what's right in front of you. Planning your own trip to Uvalde, Texas? Get more ideas of places to visit at visituvalde.com.